So you know something isn't right. Maybe you're experiencing a strange mix of things from overwhelming exhaustion, anxiety, you're losing handfuls of hair, frequent headaches, even strange heart palpitations, but you're not sure what to make of it all. Maybe your doctor has even brushed you off, saying that all of your blood work was normal and you're fine. So why do you still feel so horrible? Now, I know it can feel overwhelming to try and find answers about what, why you've been struggling and what to do about it. So today, we are going to talk about the common symptoms of iron deficiency and most importantly, the specific blood tests to request from your doctor that they will not order if you don't ask to make sure that you're getting the best answers for your health. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to learn about those tests. But first, I'm Crystal Moore and I struggled with chronic, severe anemia and felt like I was slowly dying for years. I tried every supplement, received a massive blood transfusion after delivering twins, and then endured months of IV iron infusions just so I could exist in my life. And all of that ultimately led me on a desperate quest to find answers so that I could finally heal my body to have the energy to be the woman that I wanted to be and the mom that my kids needed me to be. Uh, but before we go any further, I want to thank you for being here with me today and to help you fight for your health. I want to give you a free copy of the Iron Repair Manual. Uh, it contains the science and secrets that I discovered after hundreds of hours of research about iron and iron deficiency so that you don't have to wind up Googling and confused trying to find answers. The Iron Repair Manual includes a symptom checker, the little known blood tests that reveal common deficiencies that are affecting your health, uh, the secret iron bodyguard that your doctor probably doesn't even know about, and a science-based roadmap to fight your iron deficiency and take back your life. So just click the link below and I'll send you a free copy of the Iron Repair Manual. So now, let's talk about what your body is trying to tell you. The symptoms of iron deficiency are incredibly varied because iron affects so many functions in the body. So those symptoms often overlap or can even be misdiagnosed as symptoms of other conditions like adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, depression. So let's talk about some of the most common symptoms of iron deficiency that you might be experiencing. The first is constant fatigue or exhaustion, which feels like struggling just to get through the day or tiring super easily when you try and do nearly anything. Uh, another common symptom is anxiety or depression. I think low iron is a huge factor in so much of the anxiety and depression that people are struggling with, which definitely includes postpartum depression as well. But if the iron deficiency isn't diagnosed, the doctors just try and put a band-aid on the symptoms because the root cause isn't identified. Another symptom that points strongly to iron deficiency is excessive hair loss. I used to pull handfuls of hair out of the drain after every single shower and every time I brushed my hair. And this is because when your iron levels drop too low, your body begins to realize that it may soon run out of iron. So it begins to divert iron away from non-essential functions like hair, skin, and nails to prioritize essential functions that you need for survival. So at that point, hair follicles shift from a growth cycle to a dormant or shedding cycle, which is why you experience hair loss with iron deficiency. So you might also experience chronic headaches or migraines. For example, my daughter, who was 12 at the time, started having headaches that lasted for weeks on end. And I tried everything from hydration, essential oils, ibuprofen, and Tylenol. Did nothing to help. So her doctor prescribed migraine meds, and that didn't ease the headaches either. But when I asked her doctor to run the specific test that I'll talk about later in this video, we discovered that she was severely iron deficient, even though her hemoglobin level was normal. And that once we got her iron levels healthier, she stopped having the headaches. 
Other common symptoms are brain fog or the inability to concentrate. You might also be struggling with insomnia, which is kind of crazy because despite feeling exhausted all day long, you have trouble actually sleeping at night. Then there's dizziness or feeling faint, shortness of breath or, or the feeling of like air hunger, like you just can't quite catch your breath. So you might also experience heart palpitations and racing heartbeat. This can happen with minimal exertion or even when sitting still. feels like your heart is just going to beat out of your chest. Another one is restless leg syndrome. Uh, it's a strong indication of iron deficiency. Then there's also paleness or like a, a sickly pallor to the skin. Um, then bruising easily can definitely point to iron deficiency. Another telltale sign of iron deficiency is craving ice or other non-food substances. For example, I used to have an almost obsessive compulsion to eat ice, but I would convince, try and convince myself that it wasn't a big deal. Ice was just a good low-calorie snack. I knew what restaurants had the good ice or which of my friends' fridges had chewy ice. But once I got my iron levels back up to a healthy level, I haven't craved or snacked on ice since then. And finally, susception, or susceptibility to infection or lowered immune system is a common indicator of low iron. So if these sound familiar, please tell me in the comments what symptoms that you're struggling with so that we can support each other because it really does help to know that you're not alone in this. And remember, you can click the link below to get a copy of the Iron Repair Manual and that includes a, a symptom checklist that you can use. Now clearly, low iron affects us in a huge number of ways. And the symptoms of iron deficiency often get increasingly worse over time as your iron stores become further and further depleted. The challenge is that these symptoms often overlap uh, with symptoms of other conditions, which means that people are potentially misdiagnosed with those conditions because the root of the problem is never identified. So you might be asking, how can that be? I have had tons of blood work done. Well, the reason is the blood tests that doctors routinely order do not include the test necessary to identify the first stage of iron deficiency. I'll add a link in the description uh, to another video about the different stages of iron that you can watch once this one's over. Um, so this is why it's so important to arm yourself with this information so that you can request the correct blood test to identify iron deficiency. Um, so stick around and, and I'll really, I'll dive into each one of those. Um, so like I said, uh, because the symptoms of iron deficiency are so varied and while their intentions are certainly good, doctors are not trained to order the tests needed to identify it. So people struggle for years not knowing why they feel so terrible uh, or get di misdiagnosed with other conditions and doctors prescribe medications without discovering the root of the problem. Your body is starving, literally starving for iron. So if these symptoms are affecting your life, but you feel dismissed or treated like it's all in your head, please take heart. These symptoms are absolutely real and with the right answers and intervention, you can take back your life. So if you've been dealing with the fatigue and headaches, anxiety and hair loss, um, how do you find out that you are truly iron deficient so that you can start doing something about it and start feeling better? So to properly diagnose low iron, both iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia, your doctor needs to order several blood tests. So your doctor has probably already run a CBC, uh, which is a complete blood count to analyze your blood health. And while a CBC can identify low hemoglobin, which would indicate iron deficiency anemia, it is actually completely missing the test for serum ferritin and therefore cannot diagnose iron deficiency. And you can absolutely 
experience significant symptoms of low iron despite your CBC indicating a normal hemoglobin level. I strongly believe that the ferritin test should be a standard part of blood work and hope that someday it will be, but right now it's not. So it's incredibly important to ask for this test specifically. For example, let me share why testing for ferritin is important. Remember when I talked about my the headaches that my daughter started having? It was so hard to watch her struggle and not know what was wrong. And her doctor was trying to help, started prescribing migraine meds, but they did nothing to stop the headaches. Um, and I hated giving her such strong prescriptions. So when I asked her doctor to run her blood, specifically the test for serum ferritin, we discovered that she was severely iron deficient, even though her hemoglobin was in the normal range. Uh, Her ferritin was a 10, which meant that uh, she wasn't anemic, but she was iron deficient. And she also had several other nutrient deficiencies that were affecting her as well. So once I got her ferritin levels increasing, the headaches and other symptoms like restless leg and anxiety that she was having started getting better. But without knowing to ask for the test for ferritin, she would, she would still be suffering to this day. So the tests that you need to request from your doctor are a CBC, which will indicate your hemoglobin level, ferritin, and of course that is super important, an iron panel, which includes serum iron, transferrin, and TIBC. And it's also a good idea probably to get to request a thyroid panel at the same time. And then you should also request a test for B12, folate, and vitamin D because these often accompany iron deficiency. Now, I know that's a lot to keep track of or try to remember. So I included a printout that you can take with you to the doctor with a list of the tests that you need, along with a deeper explanation of what each test means and why it's important in the iron repair manual. So just click the link. So one last thing that I need to share with you is it's very important to note that the reference ranges considered normal for most of these tests are extremely broad and outdated. But sadly, most doctors aren't aware of the the current research confirming that these reference ranges that are considered normal do not reflect optimal health for their patients. So for example, The normal reference range for ferritin is often anywhere from 50 or 13 to 200, which is a ridiculously wide range. And if your blood test reveals a a a serum ferritin level of 15, your doctor is going to consider it a normal result and tell you that you're fine and that your symptoms cannot be related to iron, when in actuality, A ferritin level of 15 indicates absolute iron deficiency, meaning your body is depleted of iron reserves and you are likely experiencing significant symptoms as a result. For optimal health uh, and the elimination of symptoms, you want your ferritin to be 90 to 100. So we've identified the common symptoms of iron deficiency and now you're prepared to request the tests necessary from your doctor to discover what is going on. Uh, Now, it's also important to note that you need to identify the root cause of your iron deficiency with your doctor. Sometimes the cause is easy to identify, like cases of menstrual bleeding, pregnancy, gastric bypass, but other times the culprit is not as obvious and you've gotta work with your doctor to identify the root cause of your iron deficiency. Um, I'll put a link to another video in the description that talks about the risk factors for iron deficiency. But please rest assured that although the symptoms that you've been experiencing are incredibly challenging, and I know iron deficiency can be a lonely and scary condition because you look fine from the outside, but you actually feel anything but fine. But by taking the time to arm yourself with this information, You can fight back against your iron deficiency and take back your life. Now, I remember the struggle and feeling hopeless about ever getting better. And that is why I am passionate about helping women arm themselves with this knowledge to fight for their health. So please 
Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this or ideas about future videos and questions you would like to have answered. Um, I'll be sharing a video each Wednesday to answer the questions that you've got about iron and do my best to clear up the confusion uh, as a result of my own struggle because iron is a tricky little mineral. So if this video was helpful to you, please tap the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that you'll be notified when I do upload a new video. And finally, I want you to know that I believe that you are powerful. I know and I believe that you have the ability and the power to fight for the health, the body, and the life that you love. So go follow your